Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Ignore the shirt. You know, I got I hit a little bit. You know, I'm a little sweaty. It's hot out here in Texas, but it's also beautiful as usual. Hey, man, welcome back to the fourth dimension, man. Today, we got this 2020 Mitsubishi Outlander. SEL trim. As you can see, it look pretty nice. It's pretty much brand new. How many miles we got on the dash? We got, oh, damn. That's a lot of miles. Anyway, COVID, man, COVID. Check on your family. Check on your friends. Make sure everybody's doing okay, man. Grandmothers, grandfathers, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, best friends. Check on each other. We need each other. COVID is still around. I know the gas prices are going up. I know we all struggling right now. Everything is going crazy right now. So if you're having any problems, if you just need to vent, hit me up in the comments, email me, or you can go to my Instagram or my Twitter. We can talk there and you can just vent. I'll be there for you. We need each other. Like I said, hey, man, if you modding your car, if you want some ideas, I got you. But please, please don't disrespect each other. Respect all builds. Hey, man, you got a four center the Civic. Your friends call it crap, but you love it. Hey, man, salute you. I salute you. You're making the best of what you got. That's all we can do right now. I hope you guys are doing well. Let's hop right into this review. Before we hop into this review, I want to do a quick pause and tell you guys what brand LED lights I've been using. Oxito, man. If you've been looking to change out your headlights, your fog lights, license plate lights, reverse lights, courtesy lights, dome lights, man, if you just need some extra halogens or you want some LEDs, head to Oxito's website. Use my coupon code to get yourself 15% off on your next order, man. Y'all know I've been using it on the Maxima. The Ram got it for headlights. The Jeep got it for headlights and fog lights, and they've been doing well. Really well, well, well. Look at this. Ooh, nice and bright. That girl look pretty, too. Go on, hop up on the website, man. So, I'm doing this a little bit different. You know, I left the car running. There's a reason for that. That's just fine. But blue is my favorite color, and I love the way it looks on this car. Let's say it is 2020. What size rims we got? We got some 18s. 25. The front profile of it. You know, everybody gives Mitsubishi crap because of what they did to the Eclipse and everything else. Uh, they're just kind of the middle guy. You know, they just kind of just there. Kind of like Mazda. They're just there. But I don't really have a problem with the design or the company themselves car itself looks pretty decent sounds just like any other four cylinder I already have the hood propped open I'm not one to agree with putting a four cylinder in a crossover or SUV whatever you want to call it but hey if it works it works I have a little L right here kind of looks like the uh, what everybody's been doing now the K5 and the Hondas and all that they have a little L for the daytime run light strip Turn signals, halogen bulbs, the high beams right next to the LED running light strip. The daytime running light strip, my bad. A few specs for this vehicle. This is the SEL, so this is the four cylinder, making about 166 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. 8.3 seconds is your zero to 60 time. You can tow about 1,500 pounds. The overall length is 185. This is the CVT and it is front wheel drive, sadly. Weighs about 3,300 pounds. The interior though. I'm gonna talk about how much space is up in here for your cargo space. It's about 10.3, so it's not very big. So you've got the 18 inch rims. Overall length is 184. I'm gonna pop open the hatch for you guys. Let's try not to hit this sign. There we go. See, I'm very small. You can let these seats down, but not a lot of room back here. Fold them down. This is your 10. This is your 10 right here, right where the seat slats are. That's your 10.3. When you fold the seats down, get about 63 61 to 63 that's with 
these folded down as well. Power outlet back here, seat belts obviously. Lift this up. Got the headrest in here and spare tire. Should have been under there. Ooh. It's not there. Now I'm not gonna try to fit back here, but I will try to fit in the middle. Get your cup holders back here. These seats are very small. They're obviously for little kids. You can press this button, let it down. Don't let down. Am I too close? No. Hmm. Anyway, on to the hood. It is your powertrain or your engine bay and powertrain. Very, very small. Very small engine. It has a little bit of kick to it. Got a lot of room. It's mission. It's like half of a splash guard down there. Good news is, like I like to point out, changing your headlight bulb. You got room for that. Got your coolant here. Washer fluid. Everything seems easy to get to. O2 sensor right there. That's, that's nice. The engine is pulled forward. That is, I like that. I give you a thumbs up for that. I give you a thumbs up for that. I like that. There's a lot of space up in here to work. Everything seems easy to fix. We got a transmission dipstick. We have the engine oil dipstick. Can't find it. Not find it. Anyway, this is a nice, clean engine bay. Everything seems easy to get to, easy to work on. Nice looking vehicle, very windy. Ooh, the wind feels good. Nice looking vehicle, I love the way it looks. Compliments this vehicle. I like the silver at the bottom as well. This, this black, doesn't really have to be there, but I understand they want to make it as the commercials are we try to make it seem like it can go off-road we're not doing that with the CVT man we are not going off-road with the CVT a few drawbacks to having a CVT is the weight you can tow with this but it's not recommended because the more weight you add to the CVT there's more possibility for it to get messed up going off-road may damage you because the CVT is meant for just just like they're awesome over there CVT meant for it straight line meant to be able to merge quickly you only have one gear so the heat going up hills going down hills the weight all of that stuff let me let this tell you now all of that stuff will complicate oh it'll make it harder for that cbt to last longer Kinda digging the rims, kinda. They look, what you think about these rims? They look kinda nice. I think it's a little bit. I, I feel like the black was just like a gray. It's kinda like a gray. It should have been like black, you know? So we can match the middle piece. This is like a darker gray. And then it's chrome all around it. Like I said, the overall look looks pretty good. There's a lot of chrome. The roof rack up there is nice. You should have been matching that, but you have the black around it, which I do not agree with. The front has the chrome wrapped around the grill. The grill does not look that good to me. I don't know. I feel like they could have did a better job with this. You got your fog lights down there at the bottom. That this is a decent looking vehicle. I'm gonna hop in the back. Let's turn on the headlights real quick. Let's see how it looks. Let's see if it can look better. The halogens kind of ruin it. Make it a little worse. In my opinion, if you're gonna have a, a daytime running light strip, why not just put a, a LED bulb in there so it can match the running light strip? Let's hop in the back seat real quick. So leg room and space, sound dampening. That is very solid. It's solid. That is solid. There's no extra wiggle, no extra clinging. 
the seat is pulled back a little bit, but I do fit back here. I can slouch down just a tiny bit. The leg room back there would be atrocious, but it's pretty spacious. I got plenty of head room. There's no my haircut. I didn't get a haircut yet. I got plenty of head room. I can lean back, so forth and so on. All of these materials is leather seats. You have a AC vent back here. USB A charging ports. You got your back pockets on the driver and passenger side. Windows. No one touch. But we'll check that out in the front. I see the window switches up front. Have the automatic button on it, but I just tried it. So I'm looking in the back. Definitely for kids. Look at that leg room. If I got back there, my head would be caught right there. It would be a fatality, boy. Anyway. We have a cup holder back here that is split on both sides. Kids have a better cup holder. Kind of. It's about the same size. We still got windows to peek through. Nice size windows. Put your handles up top. Black leather seats and doors. And you got beige for the roof. On the pillars, the A pillars, B pillars, C pillars, all that. So, you got hard touch material back here. Hard touch, and we got soft right here. You let this sit out in the sun, this hard touch is gonna get you. It's gonna get you, I'm telling you. You're gonna be ordering from McDonald's, you're gonna be getting a Sprite, you're gonna put your arm right there, you're gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna sunburn real quick. Anyway, <laughs> let's count the speakers as usual. Do we have any back here for the kids? I don't see any speakers. We have one on this door. One in that one, two up there in the front. We have two tweeters where the mirror, mirrors are located. Now, I know that I can Google how many speakers this car has, but different trims come with different speakers and different cars have different options to them. So, I like to count, you know, and I like to show the people exactly where they're located. So they'll know what kind of sound they're getting, where the sound is coming from. What brand is this? Just a normal brand. It's just your generic speaker brand. There's nothing, it's not no Bose, it's not Harman, it's none of that. It's just your generic speaker brand. Six speakers, I don't see anything in the back. So, the interior for the back, I like the stitching, I like the way the seats feel. Everything's feel fine. Looks like this seat can come up and slide forward. I also, This seat as well. We do have the middle seat. We have two more cup holders. One, two, three, four, five, six. Technically, you have six back here. That you have this split. You have two up there in the front, and two in the middle. And you got the two back here. So there's plenty of cup holders back here. Let's move on to the front. We can talk more about the interior. Listen to this door. Nice and solid, just like the bag. Yeah, yes, the AC was blowing because it's hot down here. So, we have electronic seat controls, lumbar support, all electric on the driver's side. Back seats have manual with the rails, so there's the passenger has electric as well, but they do not have the lumbar support. On to the interior. Try the windows, like I said, one touch. One touch up and down. All four windows. Very nice. This thumbs up. Dash looks good. I love the way the dash looks. It's pulled towards me a little bit, especially on this side. In the middle part, it's, it's kind of positioned toward the driver, but not too much. It looks good. So, what else do we have? We have the electronic parking brake. Auto stop. Auto hold, auto brake hold. That's for when you hold. When you <laughs> That's for when you press on the brake. You activate this 
Let's say you're at a drive through or a stoplight, you can let your foot off the brake and the car hold for you. Listen to the engine a little bit. Sounds pretty good. We got your emergency braking, lane departure warning, trunk release. We got some blank switches, trash control. We got your menu buttons right here. We have your turn signal stock, windshield wiper stock, nice steering wheel, manual tilt and telescope, and Bluetooth controls for your phone, radio controls, cruise control, dual climate control, AC, more blank switches, blind spot monitoring, eco mode, which is way down here. I don't like how this is positioned, it's way at the bottom. We got a key holder and 12 volt. Armor. That is, that is no space at all up in there. We got, we do have heated seats though. And in the middle, we basically have your drive mode selector. You can see, got slow, gravel, we go on it. Now, it's not digital, it's analog, so you don't get any special things to go around the screen and all that. But you're making 12 miles per gallon with a CVT. Let me go back to that. Hang on. That is atrocious. Boy. <laughs> Average speed is 12. We do have other things. Let's change the drive mode. See if we can get some effects going. Nothing. Just a little leap. Nothing else. Nothing. Okay. Well, there's no settings here. All of this is radio controls. Let's see if there's touch screen. Yes, there is. Info, maintenance, fuel consumption. Let's see what you say. See, you also say 12. It's great. Air conditioner. Let's go through some of these menus. A little bit delayed, just just a little bit. Just a small delay. We have Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That's good. Let's go to display real quick. USB video. Check the backup camera. Like a low resolution, no trajectory. We have a nice size glove box. This review is kind of everywhere, isn't it? <laughs> I'm just moving on and on. Sunglass holder up top. Small. Small mirror. Slide. Nope. No sliding for your visor. You have home link though. The interior, I kinda, this is the same problem I had with the Nissan Rogue. Why is this right here? What else, what? There's nothing else in the car that matches with that. I mean, you can kinda go and look at the stitching, but there's nothing else in the car that matches this, except this part right here. And the back doesn't even have that. It doesn't make any sense. There's like, there's so much black, and then there's this, and that, and that. Like, add more of that. If you're gonna do that, add more of this in the car. You might have been trying to match this. These are two completely different colors. Add more of this, man. It looks nice. It's really hard. But add more of that. So, that's about it for this car. We do have sport mode. We do have lowest gear. A bunch of blank switches. Like I said, hood release down there. And that's about it. You got your mic right here, start and stop button, and your dimmer right here for the dashboard. So we're gonna hop into this drive. It's the main focus of this video. Just seeing if there's anything else in this menu 
it might be interesting. Okay, go back. Man. It feels, and it feels such low quality. It feels like a, a older phone. You know, it feels like a really older phone where they, or if you had a Nintendo DS, this is what this screen feels like. Literally, it feels like that. I guess that's why you have to tap it a little bit harder. Not, not too hard, but a little bit harder. I'm gonna hop into the drive real quick. See you guys in a minute. So, first things first, buckle up, people. I want you getting no tickets. I don't want anything happen to people. See, not buckled up. So, I took a minute to explain things in the interior because it felt like the car was cutting off. That's also a reason why the car has been running this whole time because there was a problem with the battery straight from the dealership. There was a problem with the battery and I'm listening to it and I'm like, sound like you're struggling to stay on. But the more I was listening to it, I realized it was the AC. It was the compressor that was kicking in that hard. And I was like, you sound like, you you sound like you're gonna stop the car from running. <laughs> like once I sat there and listened to it before I started putting on this headband and all this stuff, I was just like, this is kind of weird that you're making all of that noise. So one thing right off the bat, I can tell you guys, as I was driving to the park, this thing is a very bumpy ride. It's, it's not bumpy, it's bouncy. So you're gonna see a lot of head movement and I don't know. If you, if you guys can link me to something that can give me a more stable headband or something. Because you know, the camera is also top heavy. Like the, the rest of the body of the camera is good. It's just this one part that's top heavy. You know, we're going to go right. So, we got a small little stretch right here. We can kick it. has a little bit of umph to it but not too much at least there is a v6 option and it comes it doesn't come with the cvt which is good but as i stated this is a bouncy ride let me try to adjust the seat a little bit i don't know when i was listening to it it just sounded like the clicking like the car was clicking on and off and like the rpms was dropping really low and i was like are you about to cut off on me do i need to call somebody because before i left to do this review i was like should i bring a battery charger a portable battery charger because the thing cut off before i even left the, the parking lot <laughs> but it's weird because the ac what man you need to get another tire man you got three big old tires and one little tire but anyway, the AC was, it seemed like it was drawing so much power that it was about to turn the car off. And I can't tell if that's good or not. I don't know if the AC is just that strong or what was up. But we're going to put it in sport mode. I'm going to put it in the lowest gear setting lowest gear there's the CVT holding them RPMs short drive other than that the steering feels fine it feels like every other car with assisted electronic assisted steering the turning radius is the same as any other crossover like i said it's mitsubishi and mazda are not like people's go-to's but if you just want something decent that might mazda is the better choice to be honest with you because Mazda has been playing it really safe. Mitsubishi, kind of the same thing. But if I had to choose, I would go with Mazda. I kind of like... Because the, the CX-5, the CX-8 Mazda, it has a better infotainment. There's more controls down here. 
Like I said, this feels like a DS and it's, it's laggy, man. Come on now. Come on, it's a little bit, it's a little delay. Just, just this guy, this guy is holding the RPMs, man. It's, it's a bouncy ride, like I said. It's a very bouncy. Very bouncy ride. I'm gonna make a break. It really does. I, I feel like I'm rushing. Am I rushing? I shouldn't feel like that. I shouldn't feel like I'm rushing, but I, I feel like I am. I feel like I kind of rushed this review, but I did give the same amount of information that I usually give, I would hope. So we're going to turn. We're going to make a left. We're going to go into the, the turning radius area. That's where I'm going to practice it. Hopefully people realize I'm turning left. Oh, there's a center point guy over there. I really can't test it now, can I? Yeah, I can't test that center point guy is right here. That's okay. I get to drive on the wrong side of the road. It's rare that you get to do this. So, I'd like to conclude with just a decent car just decent and I'm not trying to down talk Mitsubishi or anything this may be your favorite car brand or it used to be your favorite there's nothing wrong with the car technically there's nothing really wrong with it there's nothing really bad about it but there's nothing to really brag about it either it's a good feeling car I'm not fond of the four cylinder but whatever I know that guy man we're gonna turn off traction and see what we can get before we end this review can I get there's a traction button we're gonna put it in sport mode spin no anything that's okay we're gonna end this review i'm gonna hop into a point of view drive and that'll be it we'll move to our location thank you guys for tuning in